How's it going guys? It's Eclipse here and welcome to one of the strangest tanks or at least strangest tank redesigns that we've ever seen in World of Tanks console and of course we are looking at the T-28. This is the tier 8 tank destroyer from the American line and this one has received some major major buffs making this one of the most powerful tier 8 tank destroyers I think I have played recently and we're going to have some amazing gameplay as we go through we'll do some replays some analysis but first off let's actually have a look at what has happened to this vehicle now if you remember the old T-28 it looked very much like a T-28 prototype at least in terms of the hull armor it had that flat plate but now it's been completely changed and it looks way more like what you'd expect from the next tank in the line the T-95 and in fact in some regards this tank actually has better armor than the T-95 tier for tier in some regards and that is based on the fact that it has very slim cupolas. It doesn't really have a lower plate. You can see the armor model here. It's essentially very, very good. It is 254 millimeters thick, which is very, very powerful, especially at the tier. And remember, you can come up against tier six vehicles in this thing, which essentially even your weak points are very difficult for them to hit. I mean, 127 millimeters on the lower plate, which is very well angled to the point that you're going to be able to bounce rounds off of this from tier 10s and I'm not even joking tier 10s bouncing off of this thing quite common especially when you're moving side to side and being a bit of a nuisance which I highly recommend and you'll see that as we move through a couple of the replays and I'm going to showcase one from the stream as the second replay. It's the highest damage game I've ever had in this vehicle um, and actually one of the most outrageous games. Uh, but of course, I won't be putting the stream audio on since, you know, this is just going to detract from the video. So unfortunately, we're not going to have game audio in that replay but it is well worth the watch because you're going to see it have just be an absolute nuisance to the whole of the enemy team so yeah really really crazy result and of course the first one that we're going to watch is really good as well but you've seen the armor model in this uh, we've also got just ridiculous penetration values for tier 8 i mean the standard pen is tier 10 medium standard pen pretty much 248 millimeters so you don't really have any problems with penning things and 297 millimeters with the premium rounds meaning that tier 10s even the heavy tanks at tier 10s are, are gonna find it horrible to come up against this thing but of course then you get 60 penetration on your HE round so it's worth having them for waffles and some of the uh, lightly armored vehicles light tanks and stuff since you can pen them and in fact I'd probably put in a couple more probably four HE rounds just in case you do come up against something like that in those game scenarios where you're trying to carry at the end but what equipment have we gone with we've gone with advanced loader we have gone with advanced optics and advanced concealment now why would you want to boost up the view range and reduce the camo it's because this tank is very very stealthy 228 millimeters of still concealment when you're using the camo um, which is really really worth it and it means that you're going to stay undetected you're going to have a minuscule detection range meaning even light tanks will not be able to spot you unless they are like tier 9 light tanks uh, or at least out spot you if you're not moving remember um, so yeah it's it's just superb in the way that it plays and also with the advanced optics you boost your view range to 473 millimeters which in its own right is amazing like you were out spotting pretty much everything in the game especially if you're stationary it's even more of a bonus and it means that if you're then coming into the late game you're trying to carry you can sit in a bush you can see where the people are going to come from and then you rip them apart using the main armament which has a reload of 6.64 seconds for 400 alpha and this is unbelievable 3616 damage per minute at tier 8 that is unheard of for the most part yeah I mean even a tank like the Panzerjäger, one of the most overpowered damage per minute tanks in the game, still only has 2,900. So, the T-28, it is unbelievably good right now, and it pairs both the main armament and, of course, the armor to mean that you have some just decimating games. But I think we've talked well enough about this tank. Let's actually jump into the game and see why that is. So this replay right here is the second game that I played and the first game 
that I played in this vehicle since it got changed is of course the first or the second replay you're going to see and that was the live stream version uh, where we played this vehicle. I was told on the live stream that they'd done a full redesign, obviously hence why the tank looks like what it does. Um, and it is just, uh, I thought, you know what, it's going to be good, it's going to have more armor, it's going to be more effective, it's still going to be, you know, slow, it's not going to be the fastest vehicle in the game. And you're probably not going to be able to carry that much, but this, this is completely untrue. You can carry so hard with this thing, and if you're an experienced player of World of Tanks, you're going to find this tank to be super, super overpowered. And actually, I would say that this is the strongest tier 8 tank destroyer in the game right now because it has armor, it has effective armor, it has brilliant damage per minute to the point where you're blowing all of the other tier 8 tank destroyers out of the water with how much it can deal. Um, and yeah, I mean, it is unbelievably good. But the key thing that I also found with this tank is that people just don't understand about the weak points. Now there are a few, there's the Coppola weak points and people can pen you in the Coppola but when you're moving and they're not exactly the easiest to hit it's not the not the necessarily too easy to be able to reliably hit them. Yes they may hit them one every three shots but because of this tank's accuracy being so good as well you're able to pounce rounds just continuously into them where you're they're essentially going to bounce off of you a couple times and when you're firing as quickly as you are, yeah, I mean, it's horrible for the opponents. Now, we land one successful hit there on the Progetto and this is what I mean about the reload. We are doing 400 damage in every single one of these rounds if you can hit them. And also, uh, if you can find yourself up against multiple opponents, this tank does actually do quite well. Now, I'm not saying that if they get around the side of you, you're going to do that well, because at the end of the day, it is a non-turreted tank destroyer. But if you do manage to get them in front of you, they're not kind of hiding all of the time, then yeah, the results just become insane. And we're going to see that within this game, because we've only got a few teammates over this side. It's not looking all too good, but the good thing is, is that we're not an absolute fool and we're going to be able to hold them at bay and come out with some great results. So we've got 1,100 damage so far and you're seeing me here just trying to pounce, like get as many rounds in as they're advancing towards this side on Dukla Pass. We're using the rocks on the left to be able to bounce a few rounds because, uh, or at least hide ourselves from getting hit in the side even and then bounce some rounds from the front because we've got the strongest armor towards the opponents. But we have got a few opponents coming in from a, a couple of angles, so if you can pull back and you can put things in between you to stop those angles opening up for the enemy team, then you're going to come out with the uh, kind of ultimate results that you're wanting. Now, unfortunately for this Progetto, didn't realise that he'd expose himself to as many tanks as he did, and we managed to deal some damage to him and finish him off. Now the Draugon did do some damage to us, but that's not because the Draugon actually managed to aim or pen us, it's just because it had the Hesh rounds loaded, and of course uh, we're going to see more from the Draugon as he, as he moves on within this game. Now for some reason he decides he's going to come around the left hand side, I know he's coming, he looks like he's going to come around, he is still loading the Hesh rounds and he actually ends up bouncing off of our tracks because uh, HE doesn't do any damage to your tracks if it hits them or at least it does minimal amounts. But we land around right into the side of him really nice there. The dragon's now trying to leave or escape and we don't like that especially when he's YOLO'd so much but he's still coming around. We've got now an IS3 who's also coming around and we land around into him and this is exactly what you want in the T28. People YOLOing you, people coming outside on, people not understanding how to pen you and they're just uh, very, very confused at this point. And you can see us just being a nuisance. Plow another one into the back of him. And this is the epic moments that you can have in this tank and why I've, I've been playing it so much recently. Just just loving playing this thing. Now, we don't fully aim there, which is a bad misplay by me. Um, but obviously, it's not too much of a misplay because don't worry, he's never going to be able to pen us and he gets taken out of the team. Perfect. They just keep on coming. Is no one actually learning? Now, we find the Yag Tiger. So this is a tank that also has very good DPM. But remember, the Yag Tiger is supposed to have some armor. Let me just tell you, 
the Ag Tiger does not have armor, and it is in nowhere near how good this tank is. And if you think about it, the Ag Tiger gets less alpha damage and pretty much reloads at the same time. I mean, it's about a one and a half seconds difference, or like two second difference between uh, how quickly that's firing. But I believe that that gets 240 alpha, and this one gets 400. So you're able to deal a ton more damage and they're literally not able to do any more. Now I'm angling my back, because obviously you can angle the back of this tank, um, obviously to try and bounce some off of the side. The Vanguard, obviously now regretting his life decisions, and unfortunately we do low roll him, but we should be able to get one more into him before he gets away, and I think he just accepted to beat that up against us, and we picked up 5,500 damage with 3,220 block damage in this game, which is just crazy when you think about it because uh, most of the heavies at tier 8 don't even have a chance at getting 3,200 block damage very consistently and this definitely does it consistently so we picked up four enemies destroyed we got some spotting damage we had people yoloing us and getting punished for it and we still only lost like what 400 hit points in that game so we had tons more to keep going and picking up 2,027 base experience so this tank is unbelievable but of course we have the most unbelievable game next and this one really is truly special so here we go on redshire and this game was genuinely just crazy i did not think that we were going to have a game like this so this was the first game i was uh, unsure as to how it was going to go i was thinking you know what it's probably not going to end up all too well we might end up with a couple thousand damage maybe two thousand damage but uh the difference between this tank and what it used to be I actually really like the old uh, t28 so I was kind of interested to see what this tank would be like with all of the buffs and the changes that it received uh, I'm getting pushed here by some of the teammates so obviously saying thanks but the key thing that I, I like with this tank is now it has the armor to back it up like before it did not have the armor so it made the tank just very very lackluster because yes you had decent dpm but you you didn't have any armor so everyone hit you hit pretty much penned you because you had a really flat lower plate um or not a lower plate but an upper plate that everyone could pen and it wasn't very thick either so uh, it was a case of if people loaded premium against you they could basically auto uh, aim you and pen you every single time but not anymore this tank does not have that feature you are not able to get away with it that much and that's the the beneficial thing that we have now with the t28 and why it is just unbelievably good now you can see me here starting to utilize this uh, getting up some of those damage ribbons uh, and essentially just trying to get as much damage as possible and you can see up against tier sixes this tank is just devastating i mean they lose like what three quarters of their hit points to uh two thirds maybe of their hit points within one shell and i mean they're not going to even be able to pen you 90 percent of the time so it's uh, yeah, kind of disgusting. Now you're seeing uh, us just basically farming the right hand side where the heavies are uh, and it's going pretty well for us and our team at this point in the game but it all changes as, it, as we move through and they start winning that side and we have to start looking in multiple directions and trying to get uh, all sorts done but I'd be interested to think what you guys uh, kind of think about these tanks or this tank in particular and even the T T95 and the T110E3 because at the end of the day I'm not a massive fan of the T123 and I'm a, I'm a fan of both the T28 and the T95 but I feel like the E3 just doesn't get that reload and the damage per minute to make it worth my time of using it over something else I mean it has the same alpha as the E4 but the E4 is more flexible and the E3's armor although it is good is nowhere near as tier for tier powerful as some of the others and I mean you're coming up against tier 8s that have good penetration anyway so they can even pen you in that lower plate now I'm not saying wargaming should give or buff the E3 I just don't think that it is a necessarily amazing tank at this point but Nonetheless, we've been able to pick up 3,400 damage, which is perfect when you think about it. A very, very good game. But the problem lies with the T28 is when uh, multiple people coming from different angles and... Uh, like you know if they come up from behind it's not ideal they're going to pen you every single time the tank doesn't really have any uh way of bouncing any rounds so you're not going to be able to do a whole lot in in that regard but 
Yeah, it doesn't really matter when you have the alpha that this has, because even if they do pen you, you only have to pen them once uh, to really make it worth it. The only tanks you really want to avoid massively are things like ISU-152s, who are going to pen you uh, most of the time straight through the front if they're using premium ammunition, or of course any of the high tier uh, uh, tank destroyers with very high penetration. I wouldn't necessarily sit out in front of them like I would with some of the mediums, um, since they are going to more reliably pen you, uh, then you will probably be able to pen them as well. So yeah, I, uh, that's the only really limitation with this, but that's the same for every single tank in the game at tier 8. I mean, the heavy tanks are, are in the same position where, you know, they can definitely, uh, you know, deal damage to the top tier tank destroyers, but they really don't have any armor, so they'll be taking hits really consistently. And yeah, because you're a heavy, you don't usually have the DPM, but the uh, T28 uh, has the DPM to actually deal with a lot of the tier 10 mediums and trade one for one with them and of course they are probably less likely to bounce around from the T28 than they are to bounce off of the T28 which is crazy when you think about it. It has the same damage per minute but the only difference between this and the tier 10 medium when you think about it is the fact that it doesn't have a turret. That is literally the only real difference. It, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy and you can see me here just getting <laughs> hyped about the fact that we're, we're dealing this much damage uh, and we're up to 4,850 damage total. But it continues, don't worry, it continues in this game. And I was just, I was actually so stoked that it was going this well. This well. And you can see me, I've been firing mainly pre uh, standard ammo in this game. Uh, so we haven't really fired that much premium in the game, which is can't be said for a lot of uh, tier 8 tank destroyers because often the penetration is something that kind of is lacking with these sorts of tanks. Now you're seeing me pull back down the ridge line. We've got a K91-2 uh, uh, to the side and we've got a something is hitting us in the back. Now, I know exactly what it is. It's the little seal clubbing Hellcat, which even at tier six is is just annoying. Um, and that tank was annoying throughout the entirety of this game. Really, really annoying. Uh, just being a little rat at the back of the map and going undetected. Now, the Hellcat is actually a tank that can probably outspot you if it's using all of the camo. But unfortunately, uh, the problem with this tank is, is that because the K91-2 keeps spotting us, the Hellcat's able to then put a round into us uh, and pen us without really taking any damage in return. And the K91-2 keeps poking that ridge and spotting us. Now, the Hellcat, I'm waiting, I'm pre-aiming for him. He's going to have to do something if he wants to do something. Now, I'm a little bit scared that the K91-2 is just going to come over. So I didn't really want to make a whole push towards the Hellcat or anything like that. We could get caught out and unfortunately for the Hellcat he does actually bounce but every time he fires he gets spotted which is perfect when you're in a tank like this you want to make sure uh, that you do actually get spotted he baited my shot there which is <laughs> I don't know whether it was intentional but if it was that was a good, a good play uh, but now we're just waiting for the Hellcat uh, to crop up again and, and hopefully remove him but Hellcat doesn't seem to want to do that just yet and actually he starts moving up but don't worry we plow around into him he didn't spot us when we were stationary there it was only when we fired that he even spotted us which means the camo is holding up as you'd expect and if you look in the bottom right of the of the screen you can see the minimap um, and even when we're moving we have unbelievably more view range than we do uh, when it is station uh, well even when it is stationary so we've got about three squares extra of view range when we're stationary and about two squares extra view range over uh, the rest of the tanks um, when you're looking at it. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty brilliant. I mean, uh, you can take when we are stopped, we've got 2.7 squares because every single square in the game is at 100 meters, I believe, from what I can remember, something like that. So uh, if you have two squares larger, the outer circle from the inner circle, that means you've got 200 meters better view range uh, than your detection range. And of course, if it's smaller, then yeah, that, I mean, it, you just work it out based on how many squares there are um, and then times it by uh, 100 meters. So yeah, 
you can see either way it has very very good camo and it's able to outspot a lot of the opponents unless of course they come really close to you and that way they're going to spot you anyway but that would be the case in any vehicle so just having the fact that you can play it as a camo td you have the armor you have all of that stuff in one means that yeah you, you can be pretty devastating in general to to come away with some like it literally has everything except for mobility and a turret which isn't the worst thing in the game to not have and i, I would say I would say that that would not be ideal if it didn't actually have effective armor because there's a lot of vehicles in the game that have armor that is you know it's okay but it's nothing special um and although it's supposed to have armor it doesn't really but don't worry this tank actually does and now we find a t29 this is a tasty snack this is what you want when you're playing in this game tigers and t29s these are your friend these are what are going to make you that super super high damage games because you can farm them for the full health now you can see me here 6900 damage in this tier 8 i'm so surprised with how much we've done and we've also picked up 1300 block now we've taken a lot more rounds but that's because redshire it's a much bigger map there's a lot more areas for you to get hit in the side and that's pretty much what's happened we haven't really been penned that much in the front of the tank and if we have it's been in those capolas so yeah it's not really um down to the armor it's just that you know we are sat out in an open field and when there's multiple tanks pushing from different sides you're going to take hits in the side so you just got to slim down the angles get behind rocks to put the them between you and your opponents and that way you're going to come away with a much better game now the uh tank here the k91-2 actually picks up the legion here which is the uh, type 59 pattern or type 58 pattern from the chinese line but doesn't matter when we shut him down for 7126 damage so i was super super stoked with how that went and yeah it was a, a really really good round of world of tanks 2130 base experience so it was definitely a good one four enemies taken out like the previous game and yeah i mean yes tank for a free to play tank that you don't have to pay anything for Oh, it's it's super super good you guys should definitely spend your time getting this vehicle trying it out and you will have unbelievable results like this the damage per minute is superb the armor superb the only thing lets it down like i said is of course the mobility and the fact that it doesn't have a turret but other than that it is a fantastic vehicle and hopefully you enjoyed let me know what you think of the t28 and of course let me know whether or not you want to see some more videos in this thing coming up and how to play tank destroyers like this and non-turreted tank destroyers in world of tanks i'm thinking about making a video on that but yeah just let me know if you think that would be valuable and hopefully you got something out of this video and if you did please do think about subscribing because we are so close now to 15,000 subscribers and we've got a giveaway for 15,000 subscribers going on very very soon thank you and i'll see you in the next one goodbye